yeah, I feel all right. I feel good. I feel fresh. I feel healthy. I feel fit. I feel alive. What more can you uh, ask for? You still running every day? Every day. Every day I can. I do. Yes. Hear that, Alistair? Well, not quite. I, I'm not <laughs> running just as much as I should, Ronnie. However, Ronnie, I want to ask you, mate. I watched you yesterday. I follow you on that. I can't remind what it's called. Instagram or a TikTok or something. Oh, right, yeah. are, you, are you doing a bit of cooking, mate? Always do. Always well, have done. Yeah. Well, I'm going to have. I'm going to have a go at that chicken you made the other night. I look, I look terrific. <laughs> it's easy, mate. Easy. <laughs> yeah, the only chicken you know about is what you get in a box. It's better than Nando's, mate. <laughs> what are you talking about? When do you cook? I was watching Ronnie making the chicken with the, the spices and all that last night. I'm telling. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's full of uh, tell, Ronnie tell, <laughs> it, <laughs> tell us about the new book what can we learn that we don't already know it's the last book obviously like when I first done my first one they said as long as you've done something every 10 years you can kind of update it so I had that in my mind and the long, longer my career went on it was kind of like motivating me to keep playing because I thought every 10 years you can just update it so yeah. it's definitely the last one though because I ain't got another 10 years in me of like playing good snooker so um, it was just sort of I've got a really good book agent I've enjoyed doing all my books um, you done audio have you done an audio nah, book nah, I told that's, that's, that's I, tough that's I, tough I've done one and that was it I think you know if anyone's done one if they're going to do a second one fair play to you but <laughs> the first one killed me yeah, well I'll tell you what uh, it's probably the stupidest question I've ever asked in my life but Gabby have you ever written a book <laughs> this guy <laughs> what's wrong <laughs> what's wrong with you no I have not <laughs> But, but if I did, Ali, Ali, if I did, mine wouldn't be on eBay for £3, like Alan's. <laughs> why'd, you, why'd, you, why'd, you, oh, why'd you carry them cranes around with you? <laughs> Alan, I've got, uh, to, I've got to say, he's different class at colour than the men. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie, anyway, ignore these lot. Um, seven, seven world titles, outstanding, and 47. Has yeah. retirement ever come into your mind? Oh, it did when I was about 35 because I thought you was meant to be done and dusted it then. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I just got better. Uh, I've met Steve Peters and he kind of got my head right because I, I didn't have a head before that. It was just all like pop ball, feel yeah. like it, great. If I didn't, I was like looking for the exit door to go home and get out of there. So since meeting Steve Peters, he's kind of helped me sort of graft a bit, you know, and stick in there. And once I'd done that, I started winning more. So I've probably been more successful than I have been in the last 10 years. But at 35... Stephen Hendry was kind of finished his career. Davis had finished his career. So I thought, yeah. what's well, going to ha- obviously happen to me? It hasn't yet. But um, I think COVID helped me because I was, it allowed me to focus back on snooker because yeah. I was a bit like, you know, I get, I got attention disorder. So I sort of like, if something's better over there, I'm like over there and then I neglect my snooker. But COVID stopped that. So I just had yeah. to focus on practicing and I ended up winning two world titles out the last three years. But, but you don't COVID's pra- over. But you don't practice I'm a lot, I'm getting Ronnie, distracted again, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the snooker's like going a bit downhill. But um, do, I, do, I do, I do. I mean, it's, I sort of, I always say, look, I, if I can give it like 12, 15 hours a week, that's mm. good for me. I'm not good with like every day, 10 till 5, like what most people do. Do they really I, every day? They're well, on they the do, yeah. They're like wow. 10 till 5 and I just think, I can't, don't yeah. want to do that life. So what I do is I go, if I can do 15 hours in a week, how I get them 15 hours in, it doesn't matter. So I could do it all in one day. Yeah. I could do it all in two days. And then I'll take five days off and just go and enjoy my life. So I kind of like get the work in, but not in a, a way that most people probably do. Ali, but, remember the days nicking off school and getting oh, up the street? Oh, Mitchell used Street. To do it, used to do it, mate, into Mitchell Street, just off Mitchell Lane. I used to go with Coop into Hamilton, the Davis Club in Hamilton for a game of snooker as well. Ronnie, I want to ask you, mate, I thought the World Championships this year was captivating. I loved it. Yeah. I loved every minute of it. Yeah. I loved watching yourself and Jimmy doing the analysis later mm. on with Eurosport as well. Tell me what you thought about this year's championship, obviously with Selby in the 1-4-7 in the final mm. and, the, and the emergency of Luca Brassell. I thought Luca was unbelievable. You know, you talk about talent and obviously you're into football and you look up someone that does things with a ball that you just think, how does he do that? You know, and Luca is that player. Is he? Yeah, yeah, he does stuff with that ball. And I know Harry does it, but trying to do it is another thing. You know, I watch him, I think, oh yeah, I can see how he's done that. And yeah. it's just the way he just gets through the ball and... Um, unbelievable talent really you know and I didn't think he'd beat Selby in the final because I thought over two days Selby would get into him but he just kept playing his game kept playing his game and it was phenomenal you know for me he was the, the play he made that tournament yeah. and and the young Chinese guy in the semis you know he, he made it to the semis only 20 years of age but played unbelievable you know just pot just pot 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 scoring clearing up in one visit and that that's what Obviously, everybody wants to see because 
people enjoyed watching it more yeah. this year than probably most years. Uh, have you cut down on travelling now? Because I remember a few years ago you said, oh, yeah. there's too many tournaments, I can't be Yeah, doing that. well, what I've done is I've gone the other way now. I'm going to travel and play all the overseas tournaments and miss all the UK tournaments. So I can't do it all. Before yeah, I used yeah. to say, well, I won't travel. I'll just yeah. stay in the UK, which was sweet. But now I think at this stage of my career, obviously Asia is a big place to go and play, bigger tournaments. So I'll do them, miss the UK ones. and I guess I doing do, well with Barry Hound then. If I don't do well in the UK, <laughs> Asian ones, then I'll get home early and then I don't mind popping on a plane and going to Scotland or Belfast. Yeah. But if I do yeah. well, I want to come home and have a week at home yep. and chill out with the dogs and and then get back on the plane and go back to India or wherever it is they are, you know. So, Ronnie. Yeah. I was going to ask you, mate, tell us, I think a couple of years back you were a little bit critical of, 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 of some of the younger players coming through, mm. um, and, I, and I get that. Has that changed in any shape, shape or form? Um, listen, I, I don't think they build them like Stephen Hendry, Steve Davis anymore. I just yeah. don't think, you know, um, I think in football you kind of like, you've got people there obviously managing them and, and on top of them. I think with snooker it's sort of lost the culture there's no snooker clubs for them to learn from the old pros yep. so you got this instagram yeah you know, i see young kids come in in the snooker or net they're on their phone most of the day and i'm thinking like he's number <laughs> eight ten in the world he could be number one if he just got his head down yeah. yeah do you know what i mean it's like i don't look at phones while i'm playing you know what i mean yeah. i'm like just get in the zone mate just play it's like it's work you know but kids are different these days so um i think it's just more like a cultural sort of thing you know um they're just you know they don't. They haven't got someone to learn from like like I did when I was a kid. You know, who, who was who was the man that you looked up to when you were when you were a kid? And you're saying I want to be I want to be as good as him and do this. First of all, it was Jimmy, yeah. and then once I my dad sort of thought I was going to play out for a career, he said, right, forget that. You know, Davis is who you got to really focus mm. on because he was winning everything. Yeah, and my dad's like, he wants. Should just, Jimmy have one more? Naturally, brilliant. It's easy to say win more with the talent that he had, probably. But you know, getting over the line is is a different ball game in the World Championships. You know, it's it's a, a, a listen. Hen, if Hendry doesn't come along, he probably wins it. But yeah. Hendry comes along, he don't really. John Higgins. You know, John Higgins. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like trying to get past them type of players, it's it's hard. You know, they own that place. You know, Hendry owned that place for ten years. Davis owned it for ten years. You know, you you, can, you, you know sometimes you just a sometimes squeak one in, you know, like Dennis Taylor did and Ken Dockett and people like that, you know. I wanted yeah. to ask you about, um, you dedicated the book to your um, partner. I wanted yeah. to say how influential has she been yeah, in your she, career. Yeah, because I was just like, had me, I was just like into snooker and this and that. But I think once being with Layla, she sort of like brought me out of my shell a little bit, sort of made me a bit aware of yeah. different stuff, you know, like, like pe you know, people's lives and just the real world really. And, and it's, yeah, I've you know I've have different view on things. You know what I mean? I'm sort of like, uh, and you know sometimes it's like she calls it the Eastenders syndrome. Like with snooker, it just becomes like that's your whole life. Whereas she's kind of brought me out of that bit, and now I still have snooker in my life. Yeah. But I also learn to sort of like enjoy myself a little bit and not just be twenty four seven thinking, talking, playing snooker. You know? Yeah, good story about before you go on big tournaments, you're watching fools and horses. Yeah. I still, I still, I've seen them all and I laugh my head off still. You can't help it, yeah. I mean, yeah, I just, yeah. It's, it's like, it's, Favourite one, the chandelier or maybe at the bar when he oh, goes to lean yeah. in the bar? They're all good, aren't they? I mean, he, <laughs> <laughs> I like the one when he was in the, with the two girls and he talk about tennis and he was talking about the, what surface you play on and he was like, yeah, anyway, long story. But it was, yeah, I love all the Only Fools and also I think they're just just hilarious. But yeah, the, the one where he fell over the bar was good. Trigger, Boise. Trigger. Oh, amazing. The lot of I see him once, Trigger, in New York. I was in New York and just in this hotel and I sat there and it's like, Trigger sitting on his own. Yeah. Like, wow. Legend. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Legend. Legend. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so you, you're doing a couple of radio stations today or is yeah. it? Yeah, got me busy. Good. So yeah, I'm going to be working today, just, you know, grafting. Yeah, which is nice for me. This is better than playing snooker. Sometimes you know, it's easy, easy, easy. You know, like no stress, no pressure. <laughs> Turn up, chat, See, cup Gabby, of tea. No, <laughs> Thanks, Gabby. There's, there's no pressure, Gabby. When we do the gab, father, you, you sit there with cold I'm sweat. sweating, aren't I? I'm sweating. <laughs> Ronnie, listen, brilliant to see you again. You're in great form, and keep it going, mate. Thank Thanks, you. Adam. Yeah. Best of luck, Ronnie. Good, good luck with the book. Thank unbreakable, you. unbreakable, out and good shops now. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.